and they are running fifth in the 750 class. In second position, Pete Byers and John Pace into the pits. Byers off the bike, Pace waiting to get on it. Thank you, Words of wisdom, slower stop, 15 seconds gone so far. Wheels turn at 19 and a half seconds, so a slow stop from that bike. There it is, bike seven. The Maddich team bike has had a real wheel change already this early in the event. Alan Blanco and Jeff French. Now this is tactics. It obviously couldn't be something going wrong with the tyre. They've decided to go out and change, their, and change the tyre on this bike early in the event. That probably means that a tyre will be changed on the next team bike, the willing shout bike, next time round. But they've got their wheel change on bike seven, Alan Blanco and Jeff French, done early in the event. That's Alan Blanco on the bike now. Interesting tactics indeed from the Maddich team to do it this early. Now, if they put a gumball tyre on, hoping to get only through an hour and a half, their tactics have certainly failed because that bike wasn't nearly far enough up to warrant doing that sort of work. So we must assume that it's a tactic that may not have come off. race leader is this bike, Andrew Johnson, bike number three, calling to the pits now, and he's been out there one hour, 42 minutes, some 16 minutes longer than Len Willing managed on, on his Honda 1100R. He's got a 27 and a half second lead over second place, the Suzuki of Hayes Campbell that's already done its pit stop, so it'll be very close between these two after the pit stop out there on the track. Casual. And it was 4.3 seconds back from second place to third place. Bike four goes through. Number eight, which is willing and sharp. So bike three has now fallen to fourth place. The new race order is race leader Roger Hayes on four, second place Len Willing on the Honda number eight, so it's Suzuki from Honda, third place Neville Hiscock, Rod Gray on Suzuki 1100 number one, and fourth place the Honda that just stopped there, now with Greg Pretty, the South Australian, in the saddle on bike three. Greg Pretty, who fell off the bike last year in the rain when the bike was similarly well positioned. And let's hear now from the man that had that bike in the lead, Andrew Johnson. Andrew, an incredibly fast pit stop. You've got a substantial lead at the stage. How are you finding it out there? Oh, it's good, Dennis. Um, the tyres aren't sliding. They're hanging on good. I'm having a lot of problems with uh, the traffic, but I seem to be getting around it. You look like you were really using your head at the start of the race. You weren't the old Andrew when you were out leading it. You hung back in about fifth or sixth place. Then once you started to make your move, you were really reeling them in. Yeah, well, I wanted to conserve a bit more fuel too. Uh, the first opening laps, I knew they'd be uh, I was going for it, and I didn't want to be with them, but uh, well, I just wanted to pick them off. That's obviously been successful because you have remained out there longer than any other bike. Yeah. With one third of the race distance gone and the first pit stop's over, this is the race for the lead in the Castrol 6 hour between Roger Hayes on bike four and on bike eight. Vince Sharp coming up, ranging alongside him. Less than 10 seconds covers the top four riders in the Castrol 6 hour. An incredible race. Hayes has been reeled back by Vince Sharp on bike eight to see Matty Chonda, and there seems to be nothing that the wily Roger Hayes, twice winner of the event, can do about it. He's been sneaking his way through traffic, trying to put slow bikes in between him and, uh, and Sharp, but to no avail, because now Sharp is right on his tail. See there, Hayes just manages to put a slow bike between him and give himself another respite. 
In third position on the road is Neville Hiscock, and in fourth, Greg Pretty on the team Honda bike that Andrew Johnson gave to him. And after 119 laps of racing, only six se seconds separates the first four bikes. While well, tactics would be the least thing on Roger Hayes' mind at the moment, the tactics are these. Bike four, Hayes leading, the willing sharp bike behind him, and the Hiscock bike behind that again, all face three additional pit stops. In fourth position, six seconds only behind the leader, Greg Pretty and Andrew Johnson only need two extra pit stops. So they at this moment must be seen to be in the technically good position. And that gap first to fourth has come down to only five seconds as in fourth place. Greg Pretty on bike number three, Honda number three, is catching Rod Gray, the South African, There's as the, the lead. lead changes, catches the South African on bike number one, co-riding with Neville Hiscock on Suzuki. So now Honda leads from Suzuki. Suzuki's also in third place, but being caught by another Honda. Vince Sharp being helped perhaps by bike seven trailing him a lap down with a new rear tire he's been sticking with him all the way on his charge through the field to the lead it's a bit hard to count how many leaders we've had in the race so far but there's been quite a number but this is the first time for bike number eight Vince Sharp a man who was concerned about having a pain-killing injection this morning on his leg he went to see the doctor between practices yesterday and today quite likely to have to receive medical treatment on it after today's race. Wasn't too sharp a pit stop, but it didn't stop them from hitting the lead. And for the third time in two hours, the rain starts coming down again, and that's brought Max Thompson and Bernie Summers on their Kawasaki 750 down. That's Summers on, or rather off the bike at this stage. And that shows that you're going to have to be very careful out there now, because that shower of rain which is almost invisible to the riders, but which is covering the track with a small amount of water, is making the conditions here very dicey indeed. Enough rubber now being laid on the track that a mixture of that and water makes the conditions treacherous. But the situation at the lead has changed again with Roger Hayes forging back in front of Vince Sharp. Four different bikes have led the race so far. And Sharp takes him on a wide outside line on the run up to the loop. And there he is, and he entered the loop first. And things are treacherous. This is the moment when anybody could come undone. You see there that the second Matic team bike, the Jeff French Allen Blanco number seven Honda, back in front of bike eight and there's Roger Hayes now looking as though he might slip just a touch behind Sharp. Sharp who's doing a great job backing up a very good early session by Len Willing and the rain is really getting serious. Oh! Vince Sharp that deserves applause what a fantastic save. Well, there's going to be a fair deal of that in the next few minutes, I think. The riders know the conditions. No time to fit wet weather gear. Leather's absorbing the rain. And with nearly an hour still on the bike for some riders, unable to get waterproof gear on, and sharp a, a peel off on his visor. Might just be an extra Perspex coating on it. Let's have a look at that one again, if your heart can take it. Oh, how sideways can you get? And he's still got to get around the corner. And that would have earned applause and relief from a fair number of the people in the pit counter. Same man a lap later. Now that's better. And there's a fall in the rain. 